Today, the fairly simple task of mounting the Conspeed Whirlwind prop, but it can be a little intimidating since uh, you may have never done it before, and it's an expense piece of kit. We'll show you how we did it on the floor. All right, we'll start with a good review of the installation manual, looking at the size of the bolts, lubricants required, torque values, orientation of the prop, and just the general instructions on how to install it. Now the flywheel is the first thing to put on. It may already be on with a couple of bolts that hold it in place, so you might have to take those couple bolts off. And it will only go in one orientation, so just keep rotating the bolt pattern until it sits nice and flush without any force to sit on the crankshaft. A really important part is uh, if you have an alternator on the front, make sure that the alternator belt is on. Otherwise, the propeller will have to come back off in order to get it on, so it's a bit of a pain in that respect. So not only is it on on the flywheel, but you make sure that it goes on in the inside of the starter. So the first time I did this, actually the belt was on the outside of the starter, as your keen eye can see there. And I ended up having to loosen the prop by uh, about half an inch and then squeeze the alternator belt back into the proper location and then tighten the prop again. So make sure the belt is on and it's inside the starter ring. And we'll rotate the flywheel to the top dead center mark on the top and we'll align that with the split in the case and that'll be top dead center of cylinder number one. And that's what we'll use as our baseline reference. We'll lube the prop hub as well as the crankshaft and we'll install the prop in the 10 and 2 location. And all this should be done by hand from now. So as you lift the prop into place and rotate the bolts, they should easily spin into their spot by hand. And then we'll torque them afterwards. Now for the torque, you saw that little extension there. This torque wrench here is 19 and a half inches from the end to the center of the grip. But we're gonna have to add this extension here, which is a three inch extension. So the actual torque value called out in the installation manual is going to be slightly less since we have a longer moment arm. So for 55 foot-pounds we'll multiply that by 19.5 inches divided by 19.5 plus the 3 inch extension gives us a fraction of the torque required in the installation manual. So that works out to 48 foot-pounds and the installation manual actually states to first torque it to 50% and then 75% and then the full 100% at the end. So we'll start with 24 foot-pounds, then we'll torque it to 36, and then the final 48 foot-pounds to get the proper torque with the extension. Now comes the safety wire. This can be a little bit tricky. I had to loosen two of the nuts to get the safety wire to pass through because it was too close to the hub, and then retorque a couple of the bolts. So expect to have to loosen a couple of the bolts to torque it there. And then we'll put the spinner back plate on. This has a specific orientation and it's, we're gonna run the engine initially without the spinner on. As also the, uh, the gaps that are behind the spinner that clear behind the blades, we'll also leave those off. So you can see it's orientated. Uh, number one there will line up with blade one, number two will line up with blade two. And there's the orientation on the actual spinner itself. So I hope that helps you. It's a very simple project, uh, but if you've never done it before, it could be intimidating. It's an expensive piece of kit. Uh, build yourself something, take it for a rip. See you on the next one.